Hello there. We're in the next part. Please go check out the previous part to gauge your bearings. I am lamenting, throwing some complaints out there about how it is that everything in my life appears to be frozen. But I'm also putting it out there, a warning of sorts. Bit of a flash hazard, click it, click it, click it thing. To people who are doing this to me, I have put up a Johari window in the previous part I spoke about it. And there is a quadrant in the Johari window that I have called kick them out, get rid of them, decimate, press red button eliminate destroy completely ignore and all of those randos sitting in that quadrant are just trying to beef with me to a point of silencing what i gotta say pompous and arrogant is all that they are at this point just pompous i spoke in my previous part about how it is that i am allegedly apparently boring what in the world like stop like i've never been boring it's just never been something I got going down for myself. The Lord saw it fit that I'm not boring because he had a job for me. From the time I came out of my mother's womb, he was like, I've got a job for you. And so I'm going to make you nice and interesting. And that's what I am. I was born interesting because I was supposed to do this. Why was I made interesting? Because God knows how short attention spans of people sometimes can be. Out here twitching and glitching and losing their minds in all of that salivating boredom. People out here falling asleep in a graveyard shift. Mm. unable to pay attention anymore because they're falling asleep like i said and so god made me that cheeky that does not make people fall asleep that's who i is that's how who i be one of those people on the planet that you hold on to every word of because they're that interesting god made me interesting why because he had this for me for a job later on he made me able to catch onto people's root issues and them sit in understanding relatably so with me i've always been that girl chilling eating ice cream all day conversation just going 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 can't let it go i've always been that girl not to toot my own horn but it's a blessing i've always had so to try and make me feel as if though i am disinteresting uninteresting whatever the word is for people to try and make me feel ngare i might have believed that if i was not trained or influenced by my experiences to believe the contrary I grew up being consulted for my advice, for my opinion, quite frequently by big people, small people, just about everybody in my life. Still to this day, I keep getting tapped on the shoulder off to edit some documents. People hold on to me when I'm tired and I'm sick and I want to go. When I want to leave a conversation, when I want to walk out the door, they still are lingering and lingering and talking to me. And out of a sense of not wanting to be rude, I sometimes feel burdened by them just continuing to talk as I've got my own life to live. I've got things to do. God did that in me. Precisely because he knew that I would need to do this particular work. But yesterday, I was devastated. I was hurt because I mistakenly glanced at my subscriber numbers in that panel on YouTube where you basically are trying to switch your channels from one channel to another. It shows your subscriber numbers and I got to see my subscriber numbers and it broke my heart so much. It crushed my spirit so badly. It, it, it just it ransacked me and then I went into Facebook and after coming back to do my shorts uploading them on facebook the first few days typically interesting chick picked up gained followers shortly afterwards ever so immediately dead quiet all over again nobody watching even a single short i am tempted every so often to think maybe i'm not interesting maybe i'm boring i mean there was literally a time when i thought that maybe it's because of the quality of my videos like that my footage is grainy that my camera is not high standards high quality enough i imagine that maybe it was this environment that i live in so i did exactly what i do this thing that i've done you know how i've got like this beautiful background some kitchen or some lounge some beautiful like ornately decorated home and then i've masked the environment that i live in i've put pillows up to make sure that i cover or conceal most of the environment that i live in and despite having done everything in my power to hide my obscurity and squalor from people and using those beautiful elaborate backgrounds nowhere am i going there was a time when i thought that maybe i am kind of boring perhaps i'm laborious and long winding in my speeches i just can't stop rapping so i invested in silence detection software that took out silences and filler words like stuff like that so now you watch a video that every so often you see that there's a cut from one scene to the next because i've got silence into silence detection software that did not help with my shorts i actually go out of my way to never mind remove the silences but the issues that i have in my long form content of inaccurate captions you don't get that in my shorts because they're short i actually edit the captions so they're accurate i also in my shorts because they're short put in transitions animations that 
make me bounce up and down it's very very engaging i add music that's very very engaging in this video there is music it's a small a small little light-hearted uh lounge music beat that you can hear in the background and i use that for all of my videos because i'm too lazy to change it up all the time plus you know sometimes it helps to be consistent with the same thing because it becomes your signature like my greeting how are you doing in the name of christ i hope you're good i hope you're peachy i hope you're stellar and i hope you're in a neat little bunch it becomes your signature so this sound has become my signature this music alongside these backgrounds uh and this particular aspect ratio that i am recording from it becomes now my signature so i've just stuck to it yeah but with my shorts i don't have a signature i change them up i change the music i yeah you get my point and as engaging as they are and my shorts are also higher quality because i record them in my vehicle so i don't redo i don't mask them i don't mask anything uh, a lot of people rock up doing videos from their cars i use natural lighting it's usually in the day uh type setup thing plus with all of those transitions plus alongside with um uh the captions that are accurate that are well spelled and everything and unless of course i'm speaking my languages in which case i don't add captions because i ain't nobody got time to be interpreting zulu i just i don't have time i don't have time to do them manually the ones on CapCut automatically generate and then you just edit so that's what i'm running with yeah mm. i go out of my way to do that and don't nobody watch me not only is the short itself intriguing and engaging in terms of the quality of the audio visual in other words what i'm saying but so too is the editing top notch I have, from what the Lord showed me just this morning, in a dream that I woke up out of, the last one I had this morning, a beautiful ministry. The word that was utilized by a crowd around me was, it is, no, not is, is, is is the bad, it's the wrong word. It does not describe what I saw in my dream. The word that was utilized was, a past participle was. It was so beautiful. They used the word was, evidencing basically me being cursed into oblivion until I disappeared off social media and then those that remain being like but her ministry was so beautiful god is warning me that people want you to stop doing what you're doing Garab. but there are others who imagine the work you do beautiful beautiful i really invest but how it is that i got to a point of having invested all this much editing into all of the content that i produce what got me to this point instead of just blonking videos without taking out silences without adding music without adding animations if it's a short without you get my point yeah was what would be the ten amount of an insecurity i developed that perhaps i'm just freaking boring there was a time when i had developed an insecurity that i am boring it did happen i was graduated or demoted let's rather call it a demotion to that point i was demoted to a point of thoroughly imagining that gabor I, I did get there and it was me thinking i'm boring that got me adjusting my ministry to the height that it is now today adjusted i am where i am at precisely because i once upon a time thought that i lost it that i no longer got it that the je ne sais quoi spunk edge whatever you want to call it i lost it the thing that made my desk teeming with colleagues to a point where i had to sit in a boardroom i thought i lost it people automatically garnering themselves around my person until god was like this ain't got nothing to do with what you're delivering it's all of these bands of miscreants these derelicts all over the show that you that are chilling in the get out i want nothing to do with you quadrant of your johari window they are doing spells from here to tomorrow and the next day thereafter to block you from being heard by anyone else because the thing that you always has been is now threatening to be that to other people who are not going to underestimate you and underappreciate you they are doing spells to block you from talking to other people from being relevant with other people from being relatable with other people and from being an enabler of other people that is what they're presently working to the nail like dogs to achieve because they've been expelled from out of your inner circle and so bitterly and in a state of psychosis within their possessiveness are thoroughly prepared to let you die and to let you be decimated into isolation and oblivion not utilizing any of your gifting in anybody's lives rather than let you live without them there are consequences to actions do you understand what i'm saying they are events that ultimately fruition in the lives of people when they did certain things it's cause and effect you don't just get to drive a whole chunky one in the back of a dear and near friend and anticipate to just hang around in her life into the future 
I will say this again. There's only one thing that Jesus is still doing here on earth. Only reason why we are still here. Only reason why we still draw breath. Only reason why the earth lingers into the next day. And in the next day and the next day. He is gathering for himself a people for his own possession. And that gathering process, there is only one way that it happens. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So these people have got to be given the word of God that they might develop a faith. The faith of which if they accept it, if they walk in it, these human beings will then be awarded forever youth. They will be awarded forever life. They will be awarded forever holiness. They will be awarded forever fellowship with their creator. They will be, you get my point, they're just going to get an, an immortality and an eternity that is spectacular. According to the scriptures, only few people find that path. A small number. The road is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life and few there be that find it. Those few that find it are worth the while in heaven's numbers and books. It is written in God's word that heaven rejoices when even one sinner repents. That's how important just one person joining this beautiful future is. That they celebrate, throw a whole party for just one human being that decides to take up the offer for eternal life in exchange for all of their filth and sins and in throwing away a planet that they will have lived in striving in favor of one that's going to be eternally beautiful, clean, never a single ounce of sorrow in it, and also a guaranteed fellowship with one's creator forever and ever. Only a few people embrace it, but the majority that don't mock and scoff at those who embrace it. Because they work with their father, the devil, they then also make the living nightmare, a living nightmare out of the life of whoever it is that is awarding people with an opportunity to enter this kingdom. So gospel servants, evangelists, those that are proliferating the message, giving the word, uh, they're harassed by people on the broad road that leads to destruction that many enter into. We are harassed like no man's business, we're accosted, we're abused. And unroot us giving the gospel to those who will embrace it. We are told, shut up and don't go anywhere, you. Shut up and go, don't go anywhere, you. Shut up and don't, hey, it's taller. Whoa. How are you going to be such a bully over somebody that can trample you underfoot, oh serpent, and oh scorpion, and oh power of the enemy? How are you going to go give attitude to someone that is seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus above you? How are you going to go and try and neutralize somebody that God has spoken wisdom into that they might roar and prophesy as the light of the tribe of Judah has done just that? You are naive on the day you think that you can block the gospel on an earth that's still a going concern. Until such time that we enter into the most horrible time in the history of the human race called the Great Tribulation. Until such time that we get there, can't nobody are just sit around imagining that they can successfully thwart the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is entirely naive. And to think that you can human sacrifice a person that God has given a job before that person can speak is also naive. Kimo, I'm about to be interrupted by rain, but I will speak anyway through all of this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And that's what I'm actually trying to give people. God called himself the bread of life. And people, if they are to eat of him, will never hunger. He called himself the wellspring of life. And if people are going to drink of him, they will never thirst. And so those of us who have discovered that that's a thing, all we can do is share our experiences at the fountain of youth. All we can do is share our experiences consuming the bread of life and our experiences drinking the wellspring of life. And those that are functioning as barriers to entry, trying to prevent others from, I guess, inheriting all of this blessedness, you will be knocked out the way you are going to die. I don't know how many times I have to keep on walking, warning all of these absolutely written off debilitated souls in my quadrant of the Johari window that are no longer going to ever sit in my courtyards, ever. I don't know how many times I gotta warn them, take it and run. Take what I'm offering and run. We will never ever get along again. Literally our lives are now forked. However, albeit being forked and everything, you can still enter into eternity living. You can still embrace eternal life. You can still know Jesus and you can still be guaranteed to a reconciliation with said lady. You like me, don't you? But not enough to have kept me happy, didn't you? Well, there's a place where people don't sin. Where when you love someone, you actually show them. Where when you like someone, you actually make it clear. Where when somebody cousins you, you actually raise it and you lift up them, you raise them up in a compliment. Where if you need someone, you, you don't just pull the rough from under their feet and act like you can survive without them. There is a place coming where human beings have been cleansed of all of that gunk. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
and so they don't roam around in these streets just filthifying their garments and hurting people they need that place is called heaven so whatever bridges you have burned today there is only one place where you can correct them i will never be the same again that much needs to be understood all these animals that broke me first of all are full of gaslighting so they keep on acting like they didn't do this to me that's the first thing trying to make me doubt my own sense of reality secondly they are not sorry they don't want to apologize they have got a worldly grief that leads to death the bible says there are two types of grief or guilt there is a godly guilt or grief that leads to repentance and then there is a worldly grief or guilt that leads uh to death a worldly grief that leads to death and a godly one that leads to repentance these people are in a guilt but it is worldly because with their guilt about what has become of my life they do not desire that i should be recovered they do not desire that i should be restored they have no interest in me being okay again because like i said i have put them in a johari quadrant of written offness and they do not want to watch me go leaping in the fields like a doe and a deer that's what's good with other people they do not want me leaping in the fields like a female deer happy with my lover happy with my beautiful children and happy with my new besties because they lost me they don't want to have to grieve in their bereavement loss of a really good friend or loss of a good girlfriend ex girlfriend yeah, or loss of a cousin so they are in their guilt for having done what they did to me are imagining that i i wish i hadn't done this but like i cannot have her live plus i don't want to be humiliated so they have literally imagined my life as a necessary evil to end they have accepted in their stride that get out in the state that i'm gonna die rather than let me alone leave me go to go out there and be a doe a deer a female deer ray a, a long long way to run you get my point they do not want me to live that is a worldly guilt that leads to sin the sin of which is witchcraft it's written in god's word that desire when it is conceived brings about sin and sin when it's fully grown brings about death these people are bringing themselves to death because they are walking in a worldly guilt that leads to destruction they are not happy with what they've done but guess what over their dead bodies apparently allegedly before i get my act together again in these streets they're holding on to f former memories holding on to a woman they used to have that is now no longer in their lives as a result therefore of their gaslighting and their worldly grief that is leading them to more and more sin they are diving themselves deeper and deeper in this like quadrant of the johari window making sure that they can never even be given an opportunity one to turn a corner and with every knife that they put in my back solidifies even further now people like those if they do not repent before you get your life back together again they cannot be trusted in the future the only people you let come back into your life are the ones that say sorry in the run-up to you getting better again in other words when you're still down and when you're still out when you are still struggling to come up for air when you are still breathing through machines if they put their tail between their legs at that stage and say i put you in a position to be in a coma for 10 years forgive me i'm sorry they're the only people then that albeit having severed ties with you burnt bridges bridges stabbed you in the back you can feasibly see how you can reconcile because the bible makes it clear that you must forgive 70 times seven times but if they still hold out at the bleachers making like spectators watching your demise and then somehow you miraculously get heli vacked out from a precipitously dangerous situation those are people that would have watched you die if you did not get rescued on time and so if they knock on your door you should avoid them at all costs so the only opportunity that all of these monstrous beasts have at reconciliation with me is to flat out admit today top of that but i realized that that was messed up hearted girl please forgive me the problem here is confession they don't want to admit it i told you gaslighting pretending it didn't happen they want their bread buttered on both sides they want you in their lives but they're unprepared to say i did this to you and if a person cannot admit a heinous act that they committed against you to a point where you nearly died you cannot let them be in your life you just cannot 
they are dangerous and there is no telling what they're going to do to you again if anything i have a cousin like that who i forgave after she came back into my life following having betrayed the living daylights out of me but it was at a time when i'd been restored and she flat out went back to the drawing board again once she found out about witchcraft and look at what she's done to my life she used to be my best friend she betrayed me once before fool me once shame on you fool me twice shame on me for me to accommodate those monsters in all of their beastly disposition only because i got my life back together again i'm sorry it's naive i've been fooled once before by such an animal as this i will not be fooled again so the only opportunity that they have like i said is now they have to say sorry now they have to admit what they've done now with nobody watching my videos on youtube that stuff takes bravery that stuff takes faith to trust in my god that he's gonna restore me and so therefore refuse to be on the wrong side of history to apologize on time is very important a word in season is written in god's word is very very important i need an apology in season because once it's and out of season i will not embrace these massacred souls in my bad bad quadrant of my johari window it's done for they are done for they are walking in a worldly guilt presently that is leading to nothing but death it's leading to sin from their desires and then it is breeding death they just keep casting spells on me over and over again and from what the lord showed me because of their persistence in continuing to persecute me they won't even be awarded an opportunity some of them not all they will not be even awarded an opportunity to see my breakthrough they will simply die and face god one of them is this cousin i'm telling you about god compares her to tuli tilis she's gonna die in a car accident before she sees my breakthrough that is what the lord showed me and the only avenue of escape for this monstrous tuli tilis wannabe is to say get that wicked to be i've been envious of you all this time i wanted to wear your skin your body your eyes and i took it with witchcraft and i'm really very sorry i did it i did it i did it she will never do that or at least i anticipate she won't i can only speculate she won't it's highly unlikely that she would ever do that and lord tuli tilisi if she does not basically stop doing what rubbish she is doing altogether abandon her secret society repent give her life to christ and then say yeah look i'm sorry i was like shaggy i was out just saying it wasn't me even though you caught me on the counter and you caught it on camera i'm sure if she doesn't do that she's inevitably gonna die she will be the among she will be, she will be among the first out of my family members to basically taste a severity of eternal condemnation for persecuting a christian a severity as in like the worst part that you can ever go to in hell as a human being is to be like so basically anything short of wherever it is that satan is chilling it's gonna chill in eternal fire the devil is gonna be a lot of the worst part of hell him and his fallen angels and then the worst among the human race will be close to him and by worst i'm not talking murderers and those who are into random genocide crimes that you recognize as frankly filthy pedophiles rapists those that are going to chill closest to the devil in hellfire are those that were close to the light and rejected it those that heard the gospel and rejected it and if over and above hearing the gospel and rejecting it you also persecuted a christian you literally might even share the exact same surface area as the devil the lord measures his wrath based on his standards not ours so do not be surprised you who persecutes christians when you find yourself in a worse part of hell than even Osama bin Laden. When you imagine that you're a better human being than him. When you share an even worse part of hell than even Hitler. When you imagine you're a better human being than him. Hitler persecuted the Jews. Those who persecute God's people will suffer greatly. But there are people who are more afflicting of the body of Christ than Hitler ever was to the Jews. And right now we're his people. Before the Hebrews go back to God and Jacob's trouble we are his people and so the closer you are to a christian and the more you keep on scourging them with all of your insanity the hotter you will burn so my cousin is about to experience that kind of eternal condemnation she will have been close to god's word listening to it through me and then insisting that i die insisting that i be punished into oblivion that i suffer loneliness want sorrow she's going to be the first family member to experience that level of condemnation if she does not repent and very soon i have spoken about this over and over and over again she will die surprisingly and suddenly in a car accident i have said it over and over again and last night Gimolorile trying to bash into this door trying to come in gang gang trying to come in gang gang and trying to crash into my life gang gang and in that dream she had my hairstyle this exact same one these braids she was wearing my clothes she looked like me 
And God was like, that's the level of jealousy that your cousin is walking in. And if she doesn't conquer it, she's going to die. She's going to be the first one to come to hell. She's going to be the first one to face me for having afflicted you out of your whole family. She's going to be the first. This random cousin was among the first to, not first, she was among the many people who insisted on blocking my YouTube channel. And there's only one thing that God is doing here. It's gathering for himself a people. And when he sends out laborers and you stand in the way of those laborers, Indeed, the Lord might allow, might allow for martyrdom for them to be killed by you. But what he will definitely do, even if you martyr that saint, he will send another one and then another one and another one. But there are others that he does not allow to be martyred because they have a job to do and they will finish it. It's written in God's word that he has set apart everything for us in advance that we might walk in it. All of our good works, he has set apart our good works in advance that we might walk in them. So if God has a whole itinerary in which you are going to walk throughout your life and you are only 25% into it, anybody that imagines they're going to suddenly e e extinguish the remaining 75% is naive. And I'm dealing with a bunch of naive souls right now, literally sitting on top of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, trying to block him from speaking through me, through whatever it is that he will do through me, through whomever it is that he will reach through me. We all have different ways of doing what we do in the kingdom of heaven. And God has given me all of these gifts for his own purposes. And people who think that not you, Garabo, let somebody else give the gospel. Let somebody else do what you are trying to do. Because now I am entitled, now I'm possessive. Let somebody else rise up from the woodworks and do this thing, except everyone in the body of Christ has someone that feels as if though, why you? I promise you, everyone. Every last saint of the living God that has an important job in the sight of God has some filthy little rabid beastly animal in their life saying, what's so special about you? Why you? It's written in God's word that a prophet has no honor in his own hometown. Christ could not uh, perform many miracles in his own hometown of Nazareth precisely because people have no regard for people that they know. When you come from this neighborhood, people in this neighborhood be out you underestimating you until you get, you soar like a bird and you get embraced and adored by other people outside. So understand, trust me with every bone in your body, that every single Christian on this planet that suddenly walks in the power of God has some random next door neighbor on some What does he think he is? Well, who does he think he is? They probably have got some dude or chick that they went to school with that was like, oh. They have some random friend on Facebook on some, this one is naive, she thinks she's God. She thinks she's holy and special. Everybody in Christ has that random nasty wannabe with all of their machinations trying to block somebody that God has given a job. But thankfully, everybody that has that random background, those random nasty Instagram fr Instagram friends, when they were on the come up with just five followers, yeah, somewhere along the way, they get out of their ecosystem and that grain and they get adored and embraced. Everybody has the Nguban law in their lives. Go and ask everybody in this world that it has become a star, fame. How they were treated by their next door neighbors, by people in their schools. They were bullied. Sometimes they had beef. They passed them shade. Looked at them like, you you, you ain't Jack. When they went for an audition, they were like, <laughs> you're going to audition. <laughs> they laughed and they saw and become a star. Everybody that comes from somewhere has some people in the local community out there underestimating the living daylights out of them. I'm no different. I'm no different. So for people to say, somebody else let them give the gospel trust me every christian has got every have has got people in their lives saying let somebody else give the gospel not john let somebody else give the gospel not peter pinky carabo renewe let somebody else give the gospel not romeo someone else except two other people romeo is this rare exotic gem from out of where don't nobody know we like him we're gonna listen to you romeo we want to hear what you have to say but romeo is not a nazareth is he He's like in Capernaum or whatever. He's roaming the streets of any other neighborhood, not his own. And so there he's respected. All of a sudden, he doesn't have those skinny legs like his kiss, see? Now he's a handsome young man. That's just the way that this world operates. So all of y'all random buffoons from my history, duh. You're looking at me on some, Psh, let somebody else go do this. Hi there, buddy. There are human beings that thoroughly imagine that there is no one else but me for this job. And never mind human beings, but there's also a God in heaven that has set me apart for this job that nobody else can do. We know what happened with the, with Moses when he was called a burning bush. Christ wanted him. And the dude was like, no, 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 do this, no, 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 do that. I can't, I, I stutter, stutter, stutter. That was Moses. And God gave him Aaron to give him a little bit more confidence. But ultimately Moses did what he was supposed to do. 
The Lord is the one that raises up people and chooses to use them in whatever capacity. You don't get to rock up from Pinville Besta because the hood like Gaufela. Or what do Because when you were busy playing Chicago Gaufel, Chicago, Gaufela, come on, well, I ashy. No, some Monica next. Una blood doya. Crash up, she was always the only, all saver. The way that nobody wanted to pick her in the team because she was not athletic. And now she is that servant flying, soaring like a bird for Jesus. And you're like, I, it's in pinky, for in. Because you went to the same high school. Because you worked in the same company. Because she was your, 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 your ex-girlfriend. Because she was your friend. Because she was your classmate in school. Adversity. Because she was that random rapping on neighbor. Ona adula anza chikwa ke mme wateng. Ising pinky, ising pinky, but like according to God I chose pinky. Whether or not she had ashy knees got Chicago as a kid and she was always the oily because no one wanted to choose her in their teams. God chooses those people. He takes the weak things of the world to shame the strong and he takes the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. So those of you who feel as if though ising karabo langdella Langdella, it is no wonder you're in a funny little quadrant of my Johari window. You've been written off altogether. You've lost a person you couldn't afford to lose. Because when she was in your lives, you underestimated her. You lost her because you did not appreciate her. And now you are acting as barriers to entry trying to prevent her from moving on ahead. I don't need you to repent. I do not need you to do better. It is, however, highly recommended that you do. So that you can be awarded with eternal life. Those of you who feel a sense of deep loss where I'm concerned, because I will never come back into your lives, in the case especially of my ex-boyfriend. If you want me back in your life, get born again. The sky. I will see you in the clouds. I will see you at death and resurrection. I will see you in eternal life. I will see you in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ chilling with me in the battalion of soldiers that are out here coming to make war with the earth that is making war with Jesus Christ on that day we ain't gonna have no qualms there's not gonna be no issues I won't regard you as my ex-boyfriend just my brother so there'll be a reconciliation if you want to hang out again with me chilling watching heavenly television get born again so we can all eat lunch together one time in the sky but right here on earth there is no reconciliation possible. Right here on the planet, it is not possible. But if you love a person so much, if you miss them so much, if you feel as if, the, oh goodness, how in the world have I lost this person forever? If that is a Christian, there is a way to regain relationship with them when you've utterly burned bridges. It's called death and resurrection. It's called eternal life. If you want me back, get saved, buggers. But some of y'all right here on earth are permanently in this right off quadrant of the johari window you are not coming back into my life ever a little hook i'm in funi there is a weird little ominous like strange vibe oozing from the two of us but if you get saved we might just meet in the air that's what i'm getting at especially considering some of y'all are so gangster embarrassed with what you have done that you're unprepared to confess it at least to me you are unprepared to say ish karabo askis gal gal loya ke that girl ke tau we krashap ke nwele mba mba hade girl you are too embarrassed to look me in the face or even write me an email and say i did it all of it please forgive me can we have lunch you are too embarrassed to confess that you went and consulted a sangoma to bewitch your girlfriend's entire future omu nyumta na wasala in poverty for a whole decade because of ntoe kadile you're too embarrassed so if you're too embarrassed it's okay it's all good in the hood god gets it he understands Repent to him. Walk away from your darkness. Never do this again. But don't expect to come back into my life. Haona Motu that's going to come back into my life and live out their nasty little measly existence in my girl having gaslit me. Ain't nobody gonna gaslight the living daylights out of me pretending that they didn't do what they did to me when they know they did it. They know what they did. They know what they did. The only concession I will make to allow anyone to have lunch with me again. To sit next to me again. To come in my house and drink tea out of my crockery again. The only person of that nature I will ever accommodate is one that will flat out say I did it. But seeing as you're too embarrassed and humiliated to ever confess your sorcery, stay away from me. Keep yourself in a nice little distance. But do yourself a favor. 
repent and give your life to Christ. Don't ever do this to anybody ever again. Stop being such a massacrist in society. Stop being a little spiritual terrorist all over the show. And just live out the rest of your life in peace in Jafela raising your children or something. But forget about Karabo and you ever having lunch. I'm not going to be gaslit. I already get gaslit every single day by my own family members. Ain't nobody else going to go do that to me. Nobody else is going to be awarded an opportunity to sit opposite me having lunch, acting like you did not just bewitch the living dads out of everything I am. Acting like you did not just pull the rug from under my feet. Acting like you did not just try to end my life before time. Acting like you did not actually try to make sh make me feel like I'm dumb, Johnny. Make me feel like I'm dumb, like I am not important to communicate anything at all, that nobody can ever listen to me at all. Like at all. And actually be edified. When I have a history of edifying some people, when I noticed that my channel had gone frozen all of a sudden, initially, I was tempted to imagine maybe I'm not good enough at what I do. Until I so tweaked and peaked and did what I could in Jay to fix and hammer, doing all of these arrangements in Jay, altering my ministry, that I saw that it does not matter how well I do my shorts, how well I do my long form content. It does not matter what duration my content is. I, at some point, I thought it was a duration issue. I cut my, my minutes into multiple 10 minute videos. Part one, part two, part three, part four, part 25, 10 minutes. I've now gone back to hour long videos, uh, two parts basically that are all about an hour long. Mm. I've gone back to doing that because I realized that it makes no difference whether I speak for an hour or five minutes. I still don't get viewed. Here it is that I've got shorts that are under one minute long and they still don't get viewed. My duration don't matter. Like all the rules that apply to everybody else in this world don't apply to me. I started out in YouTube training school. In other words, I watched so many channels on YouTube of people advising how to grow a YouTube channel. And I took every last one of the advices, the, the bodies of advice that I could get from these people. I employed strategies concerning shorts. I tested the duration of shorts, duration of long form content to see what's going on. I have got, I come from an era of working for minutes on end, maybe even up to an hour on thumbnails. There was a time when I was actually investing all this time on thumbnails. I had downloaded TubeBuddy on YouTube to basically gauge my stats and use that as a barometer or a guide for how under heaven to grow my YouTube channel. I took their advice. I blonked a whole bunch of keywords. I took counsel concerning captions. Goodness, there is nothing that I did not employ. So all these rules, all of these rules that work for other people, they don't apply to me. I've got a very beautiful YouTube channel an excellent youtube channel and according to search engine optimization i'm optimized i am i am optimized because i took advice i took keyword advice i took caption advice i took title advice i took all different kinds of advice and i'm still not popping up on search engines i am still not being viewed so i stopped working on thumbnails that that much i stopped and i stopped changing my keywords every single time i did a video trying to explain what's in the video i stopped i just now have got a standard uh default uh, what is this like um, a video description I've got a, a standard video description across all my videos uh, I have basically default settings that I upload my content and then I just publish 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 and that's how it is that my work happens because it is no longer worth my while to tweak and edit and this and that and da 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 because nothing works because y'all have made my life a creepy little eerie funny odd horror movie it's clear there's a spooky little thing going on in my ministry it's called Boloi Satanetu Boloi Bobokan literally blocking a person from getting anywhere i told you guys that when i used to go to job interviews they would not last as long as most as i guess the allocated time because they would like me so much that literally within about 15 minutes they would start asking me how much would you like to earn when would you like to start so a person that engages people in that fast that quickly a person that can bring people in on board and want to keep them for like so quickly a person that can cause people to want them to stick around in their lives in such a short space of time how under heaven are they not being viewed on YouTube? How are they not being viewed on Facebook? Because I'm the same chick all up in that like gangstrosity of interview skill. I'm that same girl with all that eloquence. I'm the same girl that done wrote an essay for her boss. I'm the same girl that had done out your edited essays for friends. I am that same woman that has been drawing and catching and getting a whole bunch of bees around honey at my desk. I'm still that girl, but strangely nobody is looking at me. Isolation sorcery. Isolation witchcraft. Ostracize them. You will not be the first to do such strange, ominous things as those, you beastly monsters. In the scriptures, there is this one guy by the name of Micaiah. He prophesied the truth in the name of Jesus. In the midst of a bunch of Baal prophets that prophesied the lies in the name of their false gods. To Ahab, 
and Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat is like, oh, I want somebody else. Let's hear a, a different vantage point as to how this war is going to end. And Ahab is like, oh, there's this guy. His name is Micaiah. I don't like him because he's such a naysayer. He always says that which I don't like to hear. Exactly. That's what the scriptures say, that in the last days, people are going to gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what their itching ears want to hear because they will not be able to endure sound doctrine. And so in Jephelet, they're going to get tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine. You're literally going to want all the people that are yes sirs and yes ma'ams in your life. And just like Ahab, you will inevitably persecute, hide in a dungeon, the person that told you the truth, even though it's not what you wanted to hear. Ahab, after Micaiah prophesied to him, Micaiah said that this is what's going to happen. You're going to die in battle. Don't go to war. This thing is going to break you something bad. And Ahab was like, see, I told you, I told you when he was speaking to Jehoshaphat, he was like, I told you this guy's a bugaboo. Every time he got something nasty to say, just ignore him. And then Ahab set Jehoshaphat in failure in war by putting king's clothing or whatever on Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat nearly got killed. And just before the stray bullet would hit him, he was like, oh, oh it's me. I'm not Ahab. And so he got to live. But Ahab was killed by a stray bullet because he wore plain clothing. He, he wore clothing looking like a regular soldier, but then he caught a stray. And that stray is what ultimately killed him. And the dogs then licked his blood from the carriage because that's what was prophesied about his death. But before Ahab ended up dead in that battle, guess what he did to Micaiah? Typical. It's just so typical. You provoke understanding from a person you don't want to hear the answer from, following which you then do what? Incarcerate them. That's exactly what happened with, with uh, Micaiah. The guy was thrown into prison for prophesying the truth and then fed meager portions of bread and water. He, he became underfed a skinny little prisoner because he prophesied accurate stuff. I wonder what happened to him after that battle. Did Jehoshaphat get him out? Probably. I don't know. The Bible does not specify. But the guy was certainly put in prison for basically confirming that somebody out here going to be dead tomorrow. That's what I keep doing. And in so doing such a thing as that, like Micaiah, you then put me in prison, feeding me meager portions of bread and water. It's written in God's word in the book of Ecclesiastes that there's nothing new under the sun. Absolutely nothing. So that which you've done before, you're going to inevitably do it again. And look at you throwing me, just like my former bro my brother of old Umikeya, in prison. And then feeding me meager portions of bread and water, making sure that I'm living in isolation. Yabanda, it's so Antarctic. I'm allegedly facing suicide. I can't deal. I can't breathe. I can't do anything. I can't look up. I can't look down. I can't look sideways. I can't jive, I can't juve, I can't jab, I can't do jack. And now you're trying to make it such that in all of these Antarctic conditions that are frankly uninhabitable for human beings, you now want me to walk away from my ministry. You are hoping to inspire me to give up because apparently this is worth less it's not worth my while i'm sorry i have a job it's written in god's word that the lion of the tribe of judah has roared who can but prophesy if christ has roared you can't help but prophesy the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force and this is me taking the violent the, the king the kingdom by force people keep on trying to smother us and silence us but when god wants to speak you can't help but prophesy you can't just sit on god's word in the beginning of my suffering there was a time when I was sitting around for something like three months without doing the work of God. I kept on getting dreams of me being fat. In other words, you're holding on to food and you're not sharing it. As soon as I started sharing my content, as soon as I started recording my, my voice again, I then basically got, like saw myself looking a normal size in my dreams. The size that I was in waking life. God was showing me that when you hold on to the words I give you, the prophecy that I give you, you're, my, you're like an obese person that's overeating. You are getting this and it's coming into your body all by yourself and you're not sharing it with other people. So therefore, you look fat in dreams. You look fat. Like he literally shows me as a fat woman whenever I'm sitting on prophecy. So I can never just sit on it. Top of that, the yoke of Christ is easy and his burden is light. Meaning that even if your heart is severely broken over the fact that your channel is going nowhere, that yoke is easy and that burden is light. In other words, to continue striving and thriving with no support and nobody listening to you is a yoke that is easy and a burden that is light. It's light. It's not so terrible that you would throw in the towel. Plus, it's a passion that we are awarded. You know that saying, do what you love and you'll never have to work a day in your life. That's exactly what God does. He gives us his passions. He gives us his love, his heart. He enables us to strongly desire certain outcomes. That's why Christians put themselves in harm's way by going into regions of the world that are dangerous to preach the gospel in and they just speak. That's why they go out on the street and evangelize even though they get persecuted in the streets. They get kids, crates kicked underneath their feet. They go because the yoke of Christ is easy and his burden is light. The burden of the gospel to give it to other people is light. The passion he gives us within and his sorrow for a dying human race that is going to hell. It's so extreme that he puts it in us like an injection and we can't help but motion in the direction that he wants us to go. 
We cannot resist them. It's written in God's word that no one can deliver from the hand of God. No one. No one can deliver from the hand of God. Nobody can be given a job by God and just say no. You know what happened with Jonah. He then got swallowed by a whole entire giant fish. And the guy got vomited at shore and went to preach to Nineveh anyway. That's how the gospel works, y'all. That's how the gospel works. So you cannot silence a Christian by simply banning them on YouTube. Destroying their TikTok. Like, I don't know how many Christians have had their TikTok accounts suddenly disappear overnight. And they've started new ones. Just started new ones in Jephila. Starting from scratch. One follower, two follower, three follower, five followers, 50 followers. Starting from scratch having had a, an account that had 40,000 followers. And you are just having to start from scratch again. It's heartbreaking, but you just do it. Today, I went on Facebook. And there was absolutely no one that watched my shorts. And instead of uploading my shorts while listening to them and enjoying the sound of my own voice i uploaded them with the silence button switched on muting them so i don't feel grieved by the sound of my voice because i hate the sound of my voice when i feel as if though i'm wasting time but upload them i did upload them i did because of the passion for christ to speak the word and because of the calling that i have in him i therefore formulated a strategy to overcome nobody listening to me nobody listening to me imagine being a celebrity out here performing at a concert and only three people pitch like you've literally paid for an entire stadium and three people pitch i remember brandy came to south africa one time and she only had like a scantily handful um number of people in the stadium i believe it was fnb stadium that she went to apparently she left stage crying she dropped the mic and cried and left because nobody came to her concert frankly i blame her uh what do you call this advertisers her marketing team and whatnot they did not put the message out there enough they, they did not market that uh concert well enough nobody came and plus on top of that they ought have known from ticket sales ticket sales that brandy is not worth a while to go like in the advance so for her to rock up and have that small little stadium filled out not small a big stadium with just a handful of people I don't know whether or not they were giving their money back or what, but she ended up leaving crying because she was bereft over nobody coming to see her. Well, unlike Brandy, Christians don't drop the mic and flee. We just keep preaching. Sometimes with people, you know, throwing bananas and everything on stage. People going out of their way to make us feel like we're nothing. People resisting what we're saying. We still carry on anyway. That is the power of God. That is a person coming in the power, not of their own, but of God. Because God is doing a thing. And he is going to determine to finish it. And there is no, not going. He is determined to finish it. And so those that have been set apart to finish it in that capacity will do nothing but finish it. They will walk in a bravery that is unseen before. They will walk in an anomalous bravado, like a determination that is unseemly. A determination that is unexpected. They will be expected to plunge and plummet. I frankly don't even know how I have survived almost a decade of this level of abuse, of this level of tyrannical oppression, of this level of um, terrorism against my person. This level of possessiveness by people who want me to be finished off because I don't want them again anymore in my life. Yeah, I don't know how I've survived a whole decade with that situation being my life, but I have survived because of Christ. Like, it is not of me. It is not of me. It is the God of the universe. And so for people to think that the day's going to come when they put a plug in my mouth, it's naive. It's entirely naive. It is 100% miscalculated. There is no way that I'm going to stop. So I came up with a strategy given that every time I try to shut up, I can't. How, no matter how much I feel disillusioned, no matter how much I feel, what do you call this thing, uh, my heart feeling bereft and broken over the observation of my statistics, no matter how much I feel terrorized by all that, I still gotta keep on coming back because there's no way I can shut up. I know I can't shut up. I serve a God who has put his foot down as to what needs to happen and I don't get to be namby pamby and run away. It's written in his word, uh, that, that parable, what is this sorry not parable sorry but that we have to count the cost of being disciples we can't start projects and then somewhere along the way just quit we can't so how do you count the cost of being a disciple one gauge what's coming to you and when it comes to you formulate strategies to survive so my strategy to survive all of this quietness this deadness of my channel this attempt to close it down this attempt to close shop because people are all mad at the fact that i want nothing to do with them anymore herein lies the deal i just blind my eyes from seeing my stats and i imagine I thoroughly imagine. Imagination sets you free, free. I just imagine. And you will be alarmed at how fantastically imagining works. All I do is imagine an audience watching me. They don't have to be there. I just gotta make like a little girl and literally have imaginary audiences. And it's worked swimmingly for months. Two years I've been frozen like this on YouTube. Started out growing three, four hundred subs, getting two, three hundred subscribers per month. And then one day, gee, I just did break stopped for two years. 
Imagination's been setting me free, free. And how does that imagination work? I just avoid seeing my stats. I literally go out of my way to avoid looking at my stats. I don't look at my uh, dashboard on YouTube. I don't look at my numbers on my YouTube studio. I do not look at the number. I told you guys how it is that I deal with switching from one channel to another. I squint my eyes until things are blurry and then I click on the channel I want to click on and then once that screen has disappeared I then open my eyes normally again and we work. I, that's what I do and I've been doing that for months but yesterday I don't know I was distracted or what. I argued and let my eyes gaze upon some stats and I came to learn that since 20 I mean like it's been two years I've been in this position ever since this menacing monster from America wreaked havoc in my life that's what under heaven it is gonna happen <laughs> over there one minute ever since this menacing monstrosity of a nasty little nature from America did what under heaven it is that he did this is part one I must remember that yeah uh, and it was as I, I believe it's a combination of sorcery and shadow banning shadow banning on its own should not do this to a channel it should not achieve such stagnancy that not even one person looks at you like when you're shadow banned you will usually go from perhaps uh if at all one of your shorts in 24 hours got like a thousand views shadow banning will make it such that uh your short in 24 hours only gets like 250 or 200 views and out of those you will then get one or two likes and what have you so people who are shadow banned with big channels tend to be okay because the subscribers you will always be recommended those videos to even in a shadow banned state but new people are your biggest issue so if they shadow ban you and you're still very small you're basically kind of low-key screwed but even with you being low-key screwed there will still be a percentage of people that do see your stuff they will push you to fewer and fewer people but they will still nonetheless push you so a shadow banned channel that was growing two to three hundred subscribers per month should now that it is shadow banned grow perhaps maybe 10 to 50 subscribers per month or maybe 15. i dear human individuals went from 200 to 300 views per month not views subscribers per month to listen to this give me a drum roll sometimes negative growth in other words i got subscribers that left me and i did not get enough of a surplus of subscribers to therefore put me in a net positive of gains in lot of subscribers when i started to see minus one minus two minus three in terms of how much my subscriber numbers have grown i stopped looking at my dashboard when i started yeah so basically when i was two years ago i was sitting on like 688 subscribers at the time of freezing me i was sitting on 688 subscribers those 688 of which i gained in about two months i was sitting on that and today i'm sitting on 714 today i gained one subscriber so i'm 715 officially right now 715 subscribers that's what i'm sitting on after two years do the mathematics as to what that is i spoke about that briefly yesterday it's about 50 subscribers more or less net positive gain of 50 subscribers in two years shadow banning don't do nothing on that nature it doesn't do that so this is a combination of shadow banning and witchcraft before youtube shadow banned me i was gaining subscribers and then every so often i would get blocked i would notice that there was an issue my fasting and my praying would would wither away at it over something like two or three days and not even two or three days more like 24 hours and then by the time i was upload i uh, upload my next batch of videos i was back up and running again it was like that yeah well uh long story short what i'm trying to explain to you guys is that consistent afflicting of me with sorcery non-stop just going back to drawing boards people who work on darkness in their own capacity and they don't pay the sangoma but they are self-practicing they literally invest in me almost every single day to make sure that i go nowhere the other day god showed me that as soon as they notice an increase in subscribers even incrementally like there was a day when i gained three subscribers in one day i never saw that kind of growth for another two months it's like they literally watch my stats to make sure i go nowhere they are invested in them like how are you not <laughs> don't you get tired like always surveilling somebody like that they are staking out my ministry do you understand they are uh, what is the certain like uh, surveil is the right word but i wanted to say is policing it they're policing me to make sure i go nowhere so as soon as i climb up like just as small a number as three subscribers in one sitting it's suddenly like it gets stopped that kind of activity if there was no shadow banning by youtube i would be able to conquer it and i would likely still grow about 100 to 150 subscribers per month with that level of resistance against my person so i would still have some kind of regular traction letting on a small channel the bigger you get the more subscribers you gain because then your current subscriber subscriber base tends to push your agenda along you understand what i'm saying 
yeah so i would have grown exponentially i would like uh not really exponentially but it would have been an incline that is increasing at an increasing rate because of the number of subscribers that i would at in each new season have they would make the new subscribers that i have numbered the ratio to of new subscribers to current base would be linear in that it would be one to one do you understand what i'm saying i would maybe not directly one to one but the more subscribers i had the more new subscribers i would get so like i said the worst thing that that youtube could have ever done to me was shadow ban me when i was still so small if i had gotten shadow banned when i was a slightly bigger i think i'd be okay not okay not as okay as i could be but i would be okay enough i would not be lamenting so much and that's what christian channels are like we are shadow banned but by the time they shadow ban them they've already got like fifty thousand subscribers so they're able to just carry their own weight they're growing very slowly but they're okay because with every video they've got 5,000 views with every video they've got 10,000 views with every video they've got maybe if they're really blessed and it's a video that like is catching they might have 100,000 views but you will notice that they, they struggle with uh, growing in subscriber numbers for whatever reason like there is this guy that's been on youtube for a minute who should have a much bigger channel but he doesn't his name is dr barry Orr, and he is sitting on like 40,000 something subscribers he should be sitting on like 100,000 it doesn't make sense but he's okay why because with every video he gets like 10,000 4,000 40,000 50,000 views even though he's subs his subscriber numbers are steadily inclining they're not inclining at the rate that they should be cli climbing at it's clear that he's shadow banned to me it is it's evident to me that he's shadow banned but he is not so shadow banned that he can't breathe that nobody's watching him and thank god for that because that stuff is really like emotionally wrenching it is absolutely gut wrenching it's it's terrible to go through that to work so hard invest so much in editing a video and then nobody watches it so basically youtube nipped me in the bud when i was still too much of an infant and then witches rode that wave they exacerbated it they are insult to injuries they're like condiments on a pizza do you understand what i'm saying it's like salt it's like pepper it's like mustard it's like tomato sauce it's not the main meal it is the sides the added extras the toppings but it has got power to change the taste of the whole daggone pizza if you overkill these randos have changed the taste of my whole ministry with their sorcery and unfortunately i got shadow banned by america before i could get big enough for their witchcraft to not afflict me so negatively so now i'm growing negative numbers every month sometimes or if i am growing at all it's maybe one or two subscribers per month and with those one or two subscribers per month these people look at them when they come on board and they're like, who the heck was this idiot that made a decision to subscribe to Karab? And then they go and they bewitch it. Like the other day, one of my channels got six new subscribers in one day because of shorts that I uploaded. The next day, dead. Dead. All I could say was, ah, this is not going to last very long. So when I make observations of that nature, how do I know that there's new subscribers? Sometimes you get a notification. Um, not all subscribers show when you get them, but some of them have allowed themselves to be seen. So I do not know how many subscribers I gained in total on that channel, but I do know that that, that activity was stopped nipped dead in its tracks. I thought that maybe these people are targeting only my main channel until I noticed that all of my, channel, my channels freeze eventually at some point. It's just an affliction by a satanic conglomerate that is anticipating that they can continue like this in this fashion and not have a holy god just kill them out the way literally just murder them out the way god doesn't murder he kills as in battle god is literally going to kill them like i'm trying to help you understand they are standing in front of the most important message that human beings can ever hear in all of their lives and this message is coming from the creator of the human beings not just from other mere mortals and they think that this creator this giant force this in infinite never mind giant because that is to minimize him limit him to a size they are standing against his intentions for the human race it's just suicidal it's suicidal it's just suicidal and they keep some of them are from the past so they surveil me after months or maybe even years of last having checked on my channel and when they come back they wear a low-key disposition of psychosis and then they boom lamp based me i just dreamt about some dude that i used to think was my former husband some like animal from mtn that i thought would have been my my future husband but it didn't quite work out that way yeah he just recently came back and boom boom just sorcery boom and then some other chick from mtn as well boom these people knew my ministry and because uh these demons that follow them around cause them to develop an obsession over their victims they always surveil us they always come back they police us and in my head these people have never ever lost sight of my ministry because i've been talking about all of my pain pretty much ever since i was still employed so they can easily just find me by 
going back to the YouTube channel that they've clicked on. They can easily find me by going into my blog. They like, yeah, I, all of my contact information is on the internet. And by contact, I mean my actual channels or the various places where I say anything at all. Yeah, they're online and I'm not about to go ahead and disappear my blog or disappear my YouTube channel for the sake of running away from these monstrosities. So some of them come back after years and then boom, like Papa, you're going to go invest in sorcery over Omundwak Dalagangag. That's what they do. But when you keep on coming back, boom, boom, dropping bombs, dropping bombs in the life of a person. It's been years. God is going to kill you. Like God just neutralizes them on some, you are irresponsible. You went on and lived your own life. It's been years since you ever saw this woman. So this time around, hi there, buddy. Like you've been given years of grace. You're going to die. And that random dude that I used to call head boy, the one that I used to say was my future husband. Goodness gracious. Um, what is this? suicide. Like he was putting a gun in his head, in his mouth to shoot and then in another separate dream I, I i heard passed away from a motorcycle accident and i'm not really sure if it's him or somebody else but just some form of death is coming because of persistence on blocking umuntu so laba that are sitting using sosari on my ministry the only reason why they've been given any kind of oomph to feel as if though they're in charge here trusting all of their entities is because youtube has shadow banned me it's because america is just this irresponsible country that's stealing everybody's power the combination of those two is messing me up big time there's nothing you can do on this planet of ours about witches they will always come at you and you was you will always have to fight those entities you will always have to make that spiritual battle that will always have to be a thing so you are never ever going to swimmingly just be able to do ministry without being resisted you are going to get accosted you are going to maybe get beaten sometimes you might get put in prison all that jazz but when a system in society is also disabling you that that is basically a comprehensive silencing of souls on earth that are want, trying to speak for jesus and so that only evidences how close we are to the end of the end witches have been bewitching all this time but international systems national and international systems have not always been deliberately trying to thwart the gospel so when america in totality as a whole superpower who has got uh the remote control facilities to do what they need to do on youtube making sure that people either grow or don't grow when america in totality as a country makes a decision to press a red button on christianity and structures like these big structures that are national and international that's when the end of the world is here witches will always be rich but countries have not always been crazy so if countries are crazy that's it that's why i believe we're going home but before we go home some people gonna die because god does not want to just subjugate people to the tyranny do you understand of the rapture or the tribulation when they may very potentially have repented if they listened to garabo you're not going to get to block the gospel from those who would heed it only for them to be caught off guard by the tribulation you are the one that prevented from listening to garabo so god is going to obliterate this is a prophecy understand i'm not speculating god is going to obliterate barriers to entry that are in human form operating in their own psychotic capacity he's going to kill them off for the sake of gathering as many people as he wants into the ark before the rapture given that youtube is inevitably going to keep on shadow banning me given that instagram is going to inevitably keep on making my accounts disappear it, it, tiktok is going to inevitably keep on shadow banning me facebook is going to inevitably keep on making sure that i go absolutely nowhere but whoever adds insult to this injury whatever condiment out there in these streets is making this pizza taste ugly and salty yeah that's gonna go the lord did say that countries nations in the end will be in perplexity people will sin in egregious measure in the last days he made that clear so countries are just gonna go from bad to worse america is not about to heal neither is south africa neither is argentina or brazil neither is great britain or spain they're not about to do a better thing they're just gonna go from bad to worse that is prophetic but individuals in question human beings can make a choice a decision to do better people living in these countries are just decimating christians are just disrespecting jesus can decide i'm not going to be in the band of nasties that are doing this horrible thing to my country i will not be among the band of miscreants that are out here ransacking my land and so they can repent they can repent people individuals is who god is gunning for because that's what he's doing anyway gathering for himself a people for his own uh, possession people can repent they can but people can also exacerbate a nation's indiscretion so we are dealing with a spiritual war slap bang down the middle perhaps of many nations where there's just so much diabolical entity fused randos with their darkness versus those that are in angst and they really want to know what's going on 
and they desperately want an answer they're seeking they're searching and in this seeking and searching god is trying to send them somebody that's going to speak something that's going to touch their hearts in particular in a way that is very unique um to them and then there'll be this like witch archer chilling on a broom and also on a youtube channel that could have reached a person that was seeking and searching now god is not going to let this seeking searching guy or girl just stay in angst staring into the sky wondering what's happening when if at all he heard just the right servant of god because we all have something different to offer if at all he had heard this person he would have repented and then made the rapture god is not going to let that guy be caught off guard in a dastardly cataclysmic season of the earth's existence he's not going to let this person be caught off guard in jefel by the sky falling by the sealed judgments ba 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 boo rapture boo horsemen of the apocalypse boo kings of the earth rocks falling up boo bold judgments boo like god is not going to do that he is slow to anger and abandoning his steadfast love just as he sent uh, a servant of god to give the gospel to cornelius he is going to send cornelius to these men and women and if cornelius is in the person of karabo or pita on the side but karabo and pita are out not only being hammered by youtube but they're also being hammered by witches god is not going to remove youtube because that is a system of the antichrist beast uh structure that has to be erected and in place for such a time as this so he will rather extract a little bit of a john out in these streets thoroughly trying to suffocate some saints he will kill you that's what i'm getting at guys god is about to kill people in order to keep his servants speaking to whoever will listen so my cousin is facing death so too is this guy that i used to have a massive crush on that i thought was my husband he's facing death my ex-boyfriend facing death so many people like the guy in america facing death all of these witches that keep on a every time you see me getting five subscribers in one day you will do that until you get into a car accident you will do that until you get into a motorcycle accident you will do that until you drive a bullet into your own mouth unbeknownst to yourself that entities god has handed them over he's given them permission to finish you off you will do that until you suddenly choke on a pee and die you will do that until you get a heart attack and aneurysm you will do that until you enter into eternity people are going to die before the rapture and some of them have already communicated who they are if you do not repent randos with all of your envy and jealousy because you are possessive of a garabo with her beautiful ministry it will not be garabo's ministry that passes away it will be you it will be you i'm not about to leave my ministry i had a dream of being san marina shoe store you know what san marina shoe store is it was this shoe store that used to sell very beautiful shoes in the country but it closed down because of i guess business was not going on well it was around for perhaps a decade and then it just died off i was so sad when san marina closed all of its branches across south africa because they sold some of the baddest shoes in the game i had a dream that i was san marina shoe store it's written in god's word that the gospel of peace uh, uh when we speak it bless happy feet i like ones that have got happy shoes the shoes of peace it's the gospel message so when i have a dream about a shoe store i'm basically dreaming about the shoes of peace the gospel message that i'm out here sending out there in these streets trying to do my part as a laborer even though the, we are few and the harvest is plentiful when you are trying to close down my shoe store no before god will close san marina shoe store down he's going to close you down he's going to cut your silver cord down people are about to die and thank god even though i'm shadow banned that's what's good i certainly do get listened to by my enemies like i said they're staking out my ministry like i said they're policing me they're surveilling me they listen to my content and so even though nobody else is they are and so this message is actually getting to them that's all that matters and you will face a holy god who to whom you will then have to explain why you functioned as a barrier to entry and cousin like i said you will be the first person in the entire family to experience a severity of uh judgment of eternal judgment because of not only having been close to the light but actively going out of your way to kill a christian and within that persecution block her message from getting forward you can't stop the gospel but your attempts are going to get you incarcerated in an eternal furnace you will burn a scorching heatful de death and upon burning you will wail and weep and gnash your teeth and be like why didn't i listen i done made myself a little bugaboo having made Micaiah eat meager portions of bread and water surveilling her ministry chaining her making sure she goes nowhere hoping that the day's gonna come when she sh suddenly shuts her ministry where am i gonna go this is all i have this is all i literally this is all i have left after you stole everything from me you took children you took a husband you took a career you took a future like if you could take it you took it you pulled the rug from under my feet and you done ran with it let's amaze ran into these streets let's you sticky fingers making like velcro strips you you took everything 
ain't no way under heaven you're going to take also this because the lion of the tribe of judah has roared who can but prophesy you're naive i'm signing out in christ's name bye